This lecture will focus on sketching pictorial views from 2D orthographic views. It is important for engineers and designers to visually transform what they see in 2D orthographic views into 3D pictorial images. I will discuss and present how to create freehand pictorial sketches from front, right, and top views laid out using third angle projection. This is the front orthographic view of what I commonly refer to as a doorstop object. This is its third angle projected top view. And this is the doorstop's third angle projected right side view. In a few minutes, we will use or refer to these three views to sketch the object's pictorial view. Before doing that, I have a little video clip built using Siemens NX system that will show what this object looks like in a pictorial view. Here is the object's front view. Here is the object's top view. Here is its right side view. Asking the Siemens NX system to show the part's isometric view, it looks like this. If necessary, back up this video and make sure you understand how the orthographic views correctly define this 3D object. Our second part is defined by these three orthographic views. In a few minutes, I will use isometric graph paper to sketch the pictorial view of this part. Let's again watch a Siemens NX video clip that shows what this object looks like in its isometric view. Here is the object's front view. Here is the object's top view. Here is its right side view. Asking the Siemens system to show its isometric view, the part looks like this. Let's begin our sketch tutorial. In the, uh, in the mechanical engineering world, sometimes you uh, picture objects in kind of three space and you see them in your mind as a pictorial kind of image or view. Okay. There are other times that you are handed orthographic views of an object. And that's what this is. And this top image is three orthographic views. So this is a front view. Okay. This is a top view mm -hmm. of the same object. Got it. And this is its right side view. So if we were, if we had the same thing down here, this face here represents the front view okay. or this or that orthographic kind of plane. Now they're not the same object, right? but this would be the front plane. This surface and this surface mm -hmm. would represent the top mm -hmm. plane. Yep. And so this is a top view. Okay. And then this end and this end and this face would represent a right side view, what you would see if you were looking straight on. Cool. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work with orthographic views to try and draw and try and turn them into a pictorial view awesome. like this thing down here. Like what we did in the last video. Correct. Awesome. Now this seems pretty easy now because we've been building things with a cube. And so if you imagine if you were to cut this out of the paper, each of these, right? Yep. And put them on the face of the cube, that's essentially what we're going to do. Right. right. You just okay. need to know where the object falls. Okay. So just like this surface here and this surface, yeah. when they're on the face of the cube, they're up above. Yep. But you need to use the, the three other views, views to, to see figure out it's... how far down they yeah. drop. Yeah, so, exactly. so here's an example. So we notice that there is this line right here. Yeah. That line 
represents this same edge up here. So we yeah. can project it straight up and it lines and up with that then edge. And you know that there's a distance that's not being represented from this view. Right. right. And so if we look over here you to try and figure here. out what it is, we'll notice that this right here, this mm -hmm. face, ends up being this edge right over uh, here. Cool. Because when we project this line over, it lines up with that line. Yeah. So this line and this line down here lines up with that. Yeah, so you know that there's a notch over here in that box. Right. Cool. And this face is actually on this edge, which is this edge which up here. Which is that edge. Cool. Okay. And this radius thing mm -hmm. is this face, mm -hmm. which is also showing up up here uh, as, a, makes sense. as a radius. I like it. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Start so with the box? We're going to start with the box. Cool. And just see how far we can go with it. All right. Awesome. You gonna do it with me or just me? Uh, I'll do it with you. <laughs> they'll see. They'll see how bad I am in sketching. So, so I'm, are we I'm gonna, gonna do... just? I'm gonna just cheat. So you do your thing and don't. Oh, don't okay. Watch me. <laughs> You're gonna cheat. I'm a, no. I'm I not know how cheat. to cheat. I'm not gonna cheat. <laughs> All right. Are you I'm, finished? I'm, I'm almost there. I'm erasing my lines. So you're, uh, you did a whole lot better than I did. I'm, <laughs> I'm still working on, on trying to improve my sketching. That's why I invited you to be part of my video. I love drawing, and I think it's awesome because the cool, the thing that I always tell my kids when we do our videos is that the most important thing is to have fun. And so if you're getting frustrated and you're not having fun you got to take a break yeah <laughs> come back but i would not have been able to draw that shape um without your instruction on the other two videos really seriously yeah i don't think i would have struggled and it probably would have taken me a lot longer to get to a final you know a final uh, shape so what did i miss miss on um the front arc is a little flat right there. It needs to bow a little bit more or yeah. something. But I don't know. It's not I too shabby. I think it shabby. looks awesome. Not too shabby. Yeah, but I can see the shape. And that's the important part, right, is right. being able to see it in 3D, and I can totally see it. Right. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I think that arc was, uh, you threw that in there, and that's, that's some pretty advanced stuff. But what we're going to try and do now is we're going to do a totally new one. <laughs> okay. Even tougher. <laughs> no, this is actually easier. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do it on isometric paper. Okay. You're going to do it just freehand. So I, okay. And we're going to see how this kind of turns <laughs> how it out. it turns out. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through and number this thing so that I can so hopefully can do, it. Uh, okay. do it. So I'm going to say that this is, um, this is three, this is three, this is two. Let's say that this is nine high. Let's say that's two, and this is one. Awesome. Does that work? Yeah, I think that works great. And then let's say that this is, let's say that's four, this is four, and let's make this middle five. That could be it, because we you're gonna add, take these add dimensions things. and add them up here, right? Yeah. You so probably can... need to know this one. Oh, you're right. Let's make this one right here to be, six awesome no let's make that five we're gonna cheat we're gonna make <laughs> that five so it's as tall as it is wide awesome so it's 11 it's high and it's 11 wide okay okay i'll work with that too
Done. <laughs> Did you beat I think me? I, I think I beat you. But I'm not sure I got all the parts in there. <laughs> I got to erase this one line right here. And I'm going to erase this little detail I had in there too. Because I'm not sure it's right. <laughs> I had a depth inside that little slot. No depth. It's just a slot. <laughs> We did graph, it. We graph did it. paper and freehand, <laughs> and my son is incredibly good at doing freehand <laughs> sketches. It, it was fun. I need a lot of work too. Most important thing is practice. Practice and to have fun. Practice, <laughs> practice, practice. And so I encourage my students at Brigham Young University that they should sketch during any boring lecture. <laughs> Of any other professor. And well, I always sketch during every lecture. Every lecture? <laughs> so I just tell my students, if you're sitting in a boring lecture, even if it's Dr. Jensen's <laughs> lecture, you should be sketching. Yeah. Because it's just good practice. And I have learned that engineers that can sketch uh -huh. get all the attention. Oh. So when you're around a conference table and you're brainstorming or you're trying to figure out a solution to a problem, yeah, the person that gets all the attention is the person that can sit there and draw an idea or draw a solution yeah. and have it so that people can look at it and instantly recognize what they're trying to describe. That makes sense. So the drawing's worth a thousand words. Words. <laughs> it is. It it is. And so. Here are some techniques that we hope you uh, can use and benefit from. Uh, our next time together, we're going to try and do uh, perspectives. No. One point perspectives, okay. two point perspectives. And then after that, we'll do a, a lecture or two on orthographic sketching, which is really just drawing planar images of a three-dimensional object. Oh, so going see, the opposite direction. Going the opposite direction. Seeing okay. something in three dimension and being able to draw freehand what its front, right, and top view. Translate it to 2D. Cool. That'll be a lot of fun. I'll look forward to it. Thank you. You are great. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this demo segment. Because the skills of 2D and 3D visualization and freehand sketching are so important to engineers and designers, I provide these simple shapes as your future sketch challenge. Like these, I found in the technical graphics book by Bertolini. You should be able to find similar sketch exercises. I challenge you to sketch the pictorial view of doorstop objects seen or given only by their three orthographic views. Do one each day for the next 24 days. Let's review what you should have or now be able to discuss. How are 2D orthographic views transformed into a 3D pictorial view? How does isometric graph paper assist in the transformation of 2D orthographic views into a 3D pictorial view?